we are often asked to calculate the amount of work that is done in a certain process. Now, as of now, we spoke about three different types of processes. We spoke about isothermal processes, isovolumetric processes, as well as isobaric processes. In this lecture, we're going to calculate the amount of work that is done by the ideal gas in each respective process. Now we're also going to see that the amount of work done in a process does not only depend on the initial and final conditions, but it also depends on the pathway taken. In other words, it depends on the type of process that we are using. So let's begin by looking at the following system. Let's suppose that we have a system of ideal gas molecules shown by the following orange dots. So these are our ideal gas molecules. And let's suppose that the surroundings include the piston, the container, and everything else. So we have a movable piston as shown. So, let's suppose that we want to calculate the work that is done by the gas, by the ideal gas, on the surroundings, on the piston, the container, and everything else, when our gas expands very slowly an infinitely small distance dl. So it moves our piston an infinitely small distance given by dl. So recall that the work is equal to the product of the force and our displacement. And because we're dealing with an infinitely small change in displacement, that means we're dealing with an infinitely small change in work. So our infinitely small change in work given by dw is equal to the product of the force and our infinitely small change in displacement dl. Now recall that force is equal to the product of the pressure and the area. So we can replace the force with pressure multiplied by area as shown. Now the area in this case is simply the cross-sectional area of our piston, of our container. So, we see that our infinitely small change in work dw is equal to the product of the pressure, the cross-sectional area, and the infinitely small change in dl in our distance. Now recall that the area times our length gives us our volume. And if and because we're dealing with an infinitely small change in length, that means that a times the infinitely small change in length is equal to an infinitely small change in volume. So this becomes dv. So our dw, our infinitely small change in work that is done as a result of the expansion of the gas when the gas moves our pistons, an infinitely small change in dl is equal to the product of the pressure of that gas and the infinitely small change in volume. So p times dv. Now, this equation holds as long as we're considering infinitely small changes. What about if the gas expands a finite value from some volume V1 to some volume V2? So now we are given finite initial conditions and finite final conditions. So now to calculate the work done, which will be a finite value, we have to take the integral. So we integrate our dw from v1 to v2. And because dw is equal to the product of the pressure and dv, we see that our work done is equal to the pressure multiplied by the integral of dv from v1 to v2. So this equation holds for our fluids, our liquids, gases, and solids as long as our expansion takes place very slowly. Now, 
let's actually examine the three different processes and let's calculate the work that is done in each case and let's begin with the isothermal process. So recall that an isothermal process is a thermodynamic process in which our change in temperature is zero. Our temperature remains constant. So if we plot this result on the xy plane where the x-axis is the volume and the v-axis is the pressure, we'll see the following curve. So let's suppose we begin at point one and we want to end up at point two. So, to calculate the work done, we essentially have to integrate the curve and find the area that is underneath this section that begins at 1 and ends at 2. So, at point 1, our pressure is P1 and volume is V1. And at, pressure, and at point 2, our pressure is P2 and volume V2. Now, before we integrate, let's recall the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law states that the product of the pressure and the volume is equal to nRT. Now notice we can rearrange this equation and we find that the pressure is equal to nRT divided by 1 multiplied by 1 divided by volume. So we're going to use this in just a moment. So let's take this equation. So we have the work done in an isothermal process when our gas expands from point 1 to point 2 is equal to the integral of P times dV from V1 to V2. So the pressure, we can now replace the pressure with this quantity because according to the ideal gas law, the pressure is equal to this. Now notice the product of N, R and T is a constant because we are assuming we have an isothermal process so T remains constant and because we have a closed system, the N number of moles also remains constant. So our work is equal to the product of n times r times t multiplied by the integral of dv divided by v from v1 to v2. Now if we integrate we get the following result. Our work is equal to the product of n r t multiplied by the natural log of v from v1 to v2. So, if we expand this further, we'll see that our work done in an isothermal process when we go from position 1 to position 2 is equal to the product of the n number of moles are the universal gas constant T, our temperature given in Kelvin, and the natural log of the ratio of the volume at point 2 to the volume at point 1. Now let's move on to the isovolumetric process. In an isovolumetric process, the volume remains constant. So the change in volume is zero. So once again, let's suppose we want to plot this on the xy plane, where the x-axis is the volume and the y-axis is our pressure. For an isovolumetric process, our curves looks like this. So it's a straight line going down. So if we begin at point 1 and move to point 2, notice our pressures will go from P1 to P2 where the pressures will be different, but the volume will be exactly the same. At this point, the volume V1 is equal to the volume V2 because the change in V is zero. So that implies that the quantity of work done in an isovolumetric process is equal to, well, once again, we apply this result. The pressure times dV uh, and we integrate integrate from V1 to V2 and because our change in volume is zero, the infinitely small change in volume must also be zero. So because this is zero, this is zero. So we see that the work done in an isovolumetric process is zero.
So once again, no work is done in an isovolumetric process and that implies that the energy that flows into our system or out of our system is simply a result of heat. It's a result of a change in energy or transfer in energy as a result of a difference in temperature between our system and the surroundings. So once again, no work is done in an isovolumetric process. And finally, let's move on to the isobaric process. An isobaric process is a thermodynamics process in which the pressure remains constant. So the change in pressure is zero. So if we plot our curve on the xy plane where the x-axis is the volume and the v and the y-axis is the pressure, we get the following straight curve. So we begin at point 1, the same point, and end at point 2, the same exact point. So we see that as we go from point 1 to point 2, our area is given by the following result. So at point 1, our pressure is P1. At point 2, our pressure is P2. So P1 is equal to P2. So once again, the work done is equal to this formula. The pressure times dV from V1 to V2. So we integrate from V1 to V2. Now, notice because the pressure remains constant, we get the following result the pressure multiplied by V2 minus V1 because the pressure remains constant but our volumes are allowed to change. So we see that our work done in an isobaric process when our pressure is constant is simply the product of the change in volume and the pressure. So what exactly can we conclude about all these results? So we see that the amount of work done to take a system from one state, from one condition, to another state, a different condition, does not only depend on the initial conditions of pressure and volume, but it also depends on the type of process that we use. It depends on the pathway that we take. In each one of these cases, we had different quantities of work that was done.